we are at Salt Bay Steakhouse in New York City, where I worked for a period of a few weeks. This story starts back in the spring of 2017, when I had heard that the popular internet celebrity, Salt Bay, was opening up a steakhouse in New York. He is known for his successful steakhouses, uh, New Shred in Turkey and Dubai. At the time, I was actually working in hospitality as a bartender, so I was trying to keep an eye out for hiring notices. I figured there would be a lot of hype behind the restaurant, behind the position, and it would be very lucrative. Towards the end of that year, around October, I saw an advertisement and was invited to the open call interviews. The interview was at the Plaza Hotel in New York, which seemed a bit odd, and it was, because they were conducting interviews in the middle of a public lobby with other hotel guests. I don't understand how they had enough money uh, to put all of the staff in the Plaza Hotel, but not rent an office space or room uh, to conduct interviews. I showed up early and was the first person to be interviewed uh, by a young Turkish woman uh, who had me wait after the interview to speak uh, to... Can I help you? This is a public place. All right. This guy's nice. Alright, move five feet up this way. I guess Humpty Dumpty wanted me to move 20 feet this way, uh, so we'll roll with it. Uh, so I show up to this open call interview uh, for the steakhouse restaurant, and I'm interviewed by this Turkish woman. It was like a screening kind of thing, and then they had me wait. Uh, usually, you speak to the hiring manager after they screen you with someone else. So. This hiring manager was actually Salt Bay himself. Uh, as I was waiting, I was chatting with another guy who was interviewing there. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I actually came across this guy just earlier this year when I was going on an interview somewhere else. So I'm definitely not alone on my struggle in hospitality and dealing with you know people like this. So I get pulled over for the interview and I'm sitting across from an older man. Uh, diagonally to me is Salt Bay. After a few seconds, I realized Salt Bay doesn't speak much English and he was his translator. Uh, but Salt Bay definitely understood English. So I wanted to set myself apart from anyone else. And I have an Instagram with a lot of pictures of me, so I figured it would be perfect to show him that. You know, Salt Bay's thing is doing ridiculous stuff on Instagram related to steak, related to burgers, whether it's slicing a steak or, you know, putting something on a fire. And, you know, I take out my phone and I hand him the phone and he starts looking at the pictures of me, you know, he's going through them and he swipes over to my shirtless pictures and he started smiling. I, 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 I could barely contain myself from laughing hysterically and I was kind of like, is this, a, is this a comedy? What's going on? You, you seriously, you take someone's phone, you look at a picture of them shirtless, and you start fucking smiling in front of their face? It, it, was, it was comical shit, guys. And I don't remember the rest of the interview after that, but I ended up getting invited into meeting them the next day uh, because they wanted to discuss uh, the future of the restaurant and what their game plan was. This meeting was actually in the same lobby of the Plaza Hotel that we interviewed in and about 30 people showed up. So we all sit down and before the meeting even starts, the Plaza Hotel management staff comes over and says we can't be there because it was reserved that day. They tried to conduct the meeting anyway, quickly asking if, oh, can you go to Miami? Can you go to Miami? Because they wanted to open the Miami Steakhouse before New York as a test run. It, it's completely ridiculous. They hire these people on the spot and then the next day, they ask people to come with them to Miami in a couple of weeks to work for them. But I guess that's what you do when your restaurant is owned by a real estate company that's affiliated with one of the richest billionaires in the world. The guy that owns it is actually the richest man from Turkey. You know, it trickles down, you know, through a few companies and through a few steps, but there's so much money behind this guy that it's weird. Just a few minutes into the meeting, the police came and kicked us out. Uh, so we had to go downstairs into this bodega market thing where we were signing up to go to Miami with 
the same Turkish woman that interviewed me the other day and she's using a garbage bin as a desk. I was like, hell fucking no, I'm not going to Miami with you morons. This is already a mess. So the New York Steakhouse was supposed to open in October or November, but that was when Miami ended up opening. In hindsight, I should have probably gone down there because that would have landed me a better position in the restaurant in New York, but I didn't know that at the time and the New York restaurant opening ended up getting delayed several months. Uh, so it's now February, it was cold as shit outside and we started training at this steakhouse. Uh, there were a lot of other bartenders that were hired and as with most of the staff, they were pretty much Turkish. The bar was set up completely wrong like a kitchen you know we had like refrigerated drawers to put rabbits in or something uh, but that's a whole different story uh, so these people put a lot of money into this restaurant probably dozens of millions of dollars with little to no supervision or you know restaurateur expertise i mean if i had as much money as these guys i guess i wouldn't care if i was burning it in a driveway uh, so we ended up training for a few weeks i don't remember how long exactly i think it might have been two weeks and when we opened they were giving me day shifts, the lunch shift, and the traffic during rush hour for lunch shift was nuts. Uh, so I literally went up to the manager and asked him, hey, what the hell are you doing? You know, I had more experience than the other people. I was committed to the job for longer. In the back of my mind, I knew it was because most of the other workers were Turkish. The majority of the people working at night, especially the bartenders, all spoke the language. Uh, they were very familiar with, you know, Turkish culture. And I didn't say this earlier, but Salt Bay is Turkish, he's from Turkey. His first restaurant was in Istanbul, that's very successful. And his next most successful restaurant, I think is in Dubai. Uh, but the point is, I wasn't gonna grow a mustache or learn Turkish overnight. And I also had an offer to go on MasterChef season nine at the time. Uh, so I decided, screw these guys, I'm gonna fly out to California, to LA, and go on the show in about two weeks. Hindsight is 2020, guys. I didn't end up getting more than like five seconds of screen time on MasterChef. And I would have done a lot of things differently. I still would have gone on MasterChef, but I would have taken my family out there and taken a different approach to the whole show. But the people in this restaurant were making like $2,500, $3,000 a week waiting tables and bartending, which is incredibly good for New York City. So I didn't end up on the show. And I was probably out, you know, several dozen thousand dollars because I didn't find work for a long time after that. Uh, but what are you gonna do? Uh, you know, I, I put a lot of work into my YouTube channel. I'm very successful now. I'm happy with where I am, but I, I kind of struck out in every single aspect when making those decisions. If you keep up with Salt Bay on Instagram, you'll know that he opened up a restaurant in Mykonos and these guys have so much hype and social media presence behind their restaurant they're doing seven, eight, nine hundred, a thousand covers a night at you know two hundred, two hundred and fifty dollars a pop. This restaurant makes you know hundreds of thousands of dollars every single night under ideal circumstances. Uh, so you know whether or not it's a scheme to launder money, who knows? But they're making a shitload of money anyway, even though they're owned by a company that you wouldn't think wanted to get into restaurants and hospitality. So this is Nusaret Steakhouse in New York City. Uh, and the bar is right inside when you go in. Uh, they probably remember who I am, so I don't think they would let me in. There's actually a picture of Salt Bay on the wall there. Would have been nice to get that for the thumbnail. Uh, but there's actually a lot of people dining in there today. You know, I wouldn't think at the end of the summer that these guys were still doing so well. Uh, so I guess they have outdoor seating now. Uh, but it's raining outside. Uh, back here is actually where I used to walk in every day. We got Nusret, Hashtag Salt Bay. You know, it's a very nice steakhouse. Again, you know, super expensive, upscale clientele. Uh, you can see the bar better here. I think some of the same people that were working there uh, when I started are in there. Uh, that's a new bartender, actually. Uh, the bartender in front, though, is like this guy that does bar tricks and stuff uh, so they're doing really well uh, this is the staff entrance and uh, that's really it uh, this is actually across from the Museum of Modern Art uh, the MoMA building and it's it's by CBS too and it's right by the CBS building over here 
Uh, this is on 6th Avenue, Avenue of the Americas, and 53rd Street, I believe. Uh, so it's Midtown Manhattan. Now, it wasn't too bad of a trip from where I am. You know, parking was decent. Uh, drive home was quick and easy. So we have Momo over there. This is New Red Salt Bay. This is a CBS building uh, over there. Nothing notable, really. It was just terrible. There was an ambulance. So this is on 53rd Street and Avenue of the Americas. I actually used to work at Del Frisco Steakhouse as well, uh, which is down on 49th Street. I don't think we could really see it from here. Uh, there's like a bunch of flags down there uh, next to the shorter blue building. Uh, the building past that is 49th Street, Del Frisco's. Uh, right by the Halal guy, so I used to pass by giant lines every single day. Every single day, giant lines trying to get the Halal guy. The Baccarat Hotel is also on that street, very high-end hotel. And there's always like diplomat license plates and stuff there. Where elite people go. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, share the video if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, definitely check out frankiesfreerangemeat.com, providing you with high quality, nutrient dense animal foods at an affordable price. We sell grass fed steaks, unlike this guy. Uh, you can also go to frankiesnaturals.com, minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. Thanks again for joining me guys. If you'd like to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one health consultations, shoot me an email, frankatofano at gmail.com.